ulcers. You see, matoka has potassium. Basically, there is none. So, ulcers patients can have matoka? Yes. They can. Okay. Doctor, you're parting shots as we get off this set in just two minutes. Uh, as we wind up. Yes. Okay. Yes, just a message to the viewer. Okay. Um, as we start this year of our uh, chat. Uh, yes. Um, preparing viewers, to get back yes, to them we started this, next month. We have started this year. Tonight. Tonight. Yes. With showing you what takes place every day in your body as you are eating. Mm -hmm. Take care. As long as your stomach health is wrong, you never treat any disease. Absolutely. Because the stomach is the factory which receives the food, digests it, and then sends it to various organs of the body system. Now, the moment you have a problem with the stomach, well, if you are treating pressure, diabetes, you forget. There forget. are people that have some uh, uh, chronic diseases, and again, these two problems. Oh, uh, they, that means the, the chronic disease will never go as long as you are constipated, as long as you are having ulcers trouble. But you can avoid that. Come to the institution center. Good. Know the foods to eat. The, you take some supplements to put your stomach up properly. Then you'll be fine. If you have, you have seen that diseases like you see, as you said, time institution center. We don't treat diseases. <coughs> no, we treat. We you empower the body. Root causes of diseases. You empower the body to handle so, that. So viewers who are watching this program, if you are busy treating any disease, without going to tackle the root cause of disease which is coming from the foods you are eating and so on you are wasting time thank you, you so much take medication and medication until you take it no more His thank name. you very much for listening to this program and always tune in at this time the every second tuesday, every of, the second month. tuesday of the month his name is dr uh, tamale ismail he comes from timex nutrition center uh, the contacts were there and we'll get back to you with the same program the second tuesday of march 2022 with another topic. Michael Jordan Lukomwa is my name. The Prince from Toro Kingdom, Edward Rukidi Kijanangoma, is coming in with news tonight. Do not go anywhere. Bye bye. Your surgeon will cut part of your. At Timex Nutrition Center, we advise you on the right foods to eat, exercise profile to adopt, and lifestyle strategies which are compatible to your blood group and genotype. This empowers your body to prevent and treat many diseases like diabetes mellitus, high blood pressure, arthritis, ulcers, obesity and many others. Make food your medicine. For more information, find us at our head office on Conrad Plaza Building, Nasa Road on the second floor or call 0758-819-952 or 0778-288-361. In the western region, find us in Imbarara on High Street Amazon Building on the first floor or call 0754-918-590. And in the eastern region, find us in Jinja on Main Street Kaki Road, East Arcade 82 or call 0701-458-064. Be your own doctor. Easter, 
celebrates the beginning and the foundation of Christianity, the acquisition of a fundamental right that can never be taken away from us, the right to hope. We are in a Lenten season. Lenten season prepares us for Easter celebrations. Let us reconcile, because that is what brought Christ. This Easter season, watch UBC, your public national broadcaster. For us, we televise UBC Easter season with your religious leaders. Next on UBC, brought to you by Keep the Lights On. Use Airtel money to pay for all your Yaka bills conveniently. Open the My Airtel app to buy Yaka units. Airtel money, simple, secure, borderless. Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I am Rodon Gonzi. who will take a look at the headlines. <music> Government to spend 645 billion shillings on the healthcare of teen mothers. Legislators poke holes in government report on rising commodity prices. Greta Ankole Diocese seek 600 million shillings to host Matters Day. And in sports, Uganda Kingdom plans to grow the sports sector as Masaza select to face the cranes. Hello, once again, let's dig into it. President Teori Museveni has said that uh, the National Resistance Movement, NRM, has since the time immemorial uh, preached unity among the people because it discovered that unity is strength. Now, the president said this while commending the Muslim community and leaders for uniting. A delegation headed by the Mufti of Uganda, Sheikh Shaban Rabban Ramadan Mubadje, was at State House in Tebe to brief the president about an agreement reached between the factions and uniting as one body. Amerika Mogga, 
President COVID ya luo kumulembe kwa mkama wafe na bimu hamadi. Emi yaka lukumi mbina anamu isatu. Okutuka kakati. Na ye, amagizge wa wa, ni mkama wafe gea wa. Ya ganti mwote muveno, na mwote muveno, na mwote msigaleno. Hatina hawe ge magizge wa wa. Bwena chukula ni ngati, eh, President Yasuwe mnyo usiramu na, na agenda wala. Sivu tukweba za nyo, ingiriji wa kuata mkovid. Na kusava katonda, akungira amanya ago, na uvumu. Mukwezi The Prime Minister Robin Nabanja has encouraged people living in rural areas to participate in government programs if they are to increase household incomes. She was laun launching the cost of inaction on teenage pregnancy report. Another report shows that inadequate knowledge about family planning methods affects Uganda's development aspirations based on the huge budget allocated to the uh, health care of teen mothers. The cost of inaction on teenage pregnancy report is highlighting the impacts of inadequate knowledge on reproductive health among young people. The Prime Minister Robin Nabang expressed government commitment of managing the growing population by prioritizing education to the girl child. For the girls who unfortunately got pregnant during that period by allowing them to go back to school as a matter of fact they must go back to school as a country we have made good progress in improving access to family planning this is a fact the fatality rates have declined from 7.1 percent Prime Minister Nabanja urged to the population in rural communities to exploit government wealth generation programs to expand household incomes. If, on the other hand, we don't make the right investment, we stand to lose. That is a fact. That's why the NRM government and uh, the wise leadership of Yoweri Kagutam Seven recently launched the Paris Development Model as a new game changer for improving household incomes and putting the 39% of our population that is currently in the subsistence economy into the money economy. One of the key requirements to make informed decisions is having an improved quality of life and the money. I mean the money, same <laughs> in the pocket. Uganda needs action for economic development aspirations.
girls forced into child marriage, which is a violation of their human rights, are also more likely to become pregnant. In developing countries, nine out of 10 birth adolescent girls occur within a marriage or a union, and close to a third of the girls in this region are married before the age of 18. National Population Council recommends urgent need for health insurance to protect society from uncertainties. Make sure that uh, issues of financing are in a place Uganda does not have yet a, a, a national health insurance. Uh, this is something that we need. There is a cost for inaction in that regard. Minister of Finance is pessimistic of the high dependence rate on the limited household incomes and on the national budget. To step up this challenge of addressing teenage pregnancy in Uganda. In the communities, help us preach the gospel against child marriage and teenage pregnancy. Convince parents to keep both boys and girls in school until you trust tertiary level and promote vocational and technical education. The Prime Minister also launched the State of the World Population Report, where at least 645 billion shillings will be spent on the health care of teen mothers and education of children if no urgent action is taken. Abdul Nasser Lubwama, UBC News. The rise in commodity prices is a global challenge that has not spared Uganda. This calls for government intervention. It is perhaps the reason why the long-awaited report over the same has been presented before Parliament. And one of the drivers, Madam Speaker, was the increased fuel prices starting mid-January 2020. In the report, Factors ranging from national, regional and global have been cited. There is also, notwithstanding, the 10% import duty, which was levied last year on the crude oil, crude palm oil, a raw material for cooking oil and soap, which was last uh, financial year, which increased the factory prices by 6% for palm oil and 38% for soap. Government will address these challenges, including expansion of oil palm production. With the support of Bidico and other companies to areas of Vuvuma, uh, expansion of Kalangala, Bundibujo, the Greater Masaka, and other areas where we shall find uh, land. Members of parliament disagree with the report, citing missing links. Let's be genuine. Let's have a touch of retrofitting this country that we can cut short on what on the expenditure, but have something. Uganda, once things are going on, rather going up, we don't have where we base, where we base to get those prices. The reason that why they should go up. We need to know where do you base. You have not talked about cement. The bag of cement now has gone to 40,000. What impact has it, does it have on the housing sector? In agreement with the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, the legislators want immediate interventions. 60% of ammonium that is used to make fertilizer is coming from Russia. And Russia has halted the exportation of ammonium nitrate for the next three months. I can tell you production in the world is going to go down for basic consumable commodities and Uganda should brace for this. We are acting on behalf of our people outside there. It is something not, which is not very good. And the whole world is, is waiting for when we are discussing that. And why have we reduced this discussion? Because it is not answering what we want. A more comprehensive report has been demanded by Parliament to address the concerns. And if, if the prices of salt are going high, if the prices of soap 
are going high. And, and one of the justifications she gave was because of fuel. Why isn't the price of milk, for example, going up? So for the poor person who is in the village there, may blame member of parliament for not doing enough to ensure that the prices go down, but it may not be our own making. Government has to do more. Uh, come up with a real time data and factors that are affecting commodity prices. Oil products, laundry soap, and building materials among others are some of the products whose prices Ugandans are finding it hard to cope with. Henry Okrut, UBC. Well, the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bariomonsi, has responded to a statement of police summoning him over uh, the I beg your pardon, over talk that the late speaker Jacob Olanya was poisoned. Uh, the addressing media in Kampala, Bariom Monsi, who was responding to the Monday 11th uh, media address by the police spokesperson Fred Enanga, did not want to be dragged into what he referred as drama. I know the Honorable Chiwanda appeared on a radio talk show and mentioned my name in his submissions. And uh, now I want to warn the Honorable Chiwanda and Fred Enanga <laughs> to stop mixing me in the drama of poison. Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bariomos, has responded to claims by the police spokesperson, Fred Enanga, that he is among those expected to aid police over the late Jacob Oranya's poisoning talk. Police should do its work professionally, and stop getting excited and just so I am warning Honorable Chiwanda and Fred Enanga to stop with that excitement of dragging me into this issue of poison when I am the one actually who first told the Ugandans that is Jacob Alanya died of a natural illness. I have been on record saying he had cancer even before the medical report came because I'm a medical doctor myself. During a weekly security briefing in Kampala last night, police spokesperson Fred Enanga told journalists that a section of members of the public will be interrogated over the matter. So we are therefore summoning all those persons with other causes of death, including poison, poisoning, for further interview and statement recording. Uh, this will include Honorable Godfrey Subi Chiwanda, he also mentioned uh, Honorable Chris Variomonsi. We have Honorable Gilbert Olanya. We want them to provide us with a chain of evidence regarding that other cause of death, of poisoning that they allege. The ICT Minister, Dr. Chris Variomos, responded cautioning police against breaching professional code of conduct. And police should be professional in the way it conducts investigations. One, summons are not issued through press conferences. It is CID that prepares summons and summons are delivered to the people who are being summoned, but not through press conferences. He says delegations levied against him cannot be treated lightly. I have received calls from all over because I'm a politician. I have voters and supporters in the country. You know I hold the position of a vice chairman NRM. Western Uganda voted by NRM members the whole country. I am a member of parliament. So people are concerned. Should we come and escort you as you go to police? <laughs> Dr. Chris Bariomos even comments on the timing of the police summons. Even it is improper to start issuing summons to the man who has buried his son just a few days. Like I have said, maybe Jacob Alanya's father needs counseling so that he can come to terms with the loss of his son. At this rate, Fred and Anger might summon Jacob Alanya <laughs> by the time we issue summons. Because now his father is saying, My son told me that it will be Jacob Alanya's word against his father. So are you, he might end up summoning Jacob Alanya. The chief government communicator reiterates that the earlier Oranya's post-mortem report issued is still valid and should be respected. Robert Onyango, UBC News.
Meanwhile, bishops of Greater Ankole region have appealed to companies, business entities, institutions and individuals to offer financial assistance towards this year's Matters Day celebration. While addressing the press at All Saints Church in Kampala, the Bishop on Kole Diocese, Right Reverend Dr. Fred Sheldon Wesigwa said they have a budget of 600 million shillings. The province of Church of Uganda chose Greater Ankole Diocese to host and organize this year's 3rd June Matters Day. Greater Ankole comprises of Ankole, West Ankole, North Ankole, South Ankole, and Northwest Ankole Dioceses, where they expect to have about 200 pilgrims, including two people above 70 years. This will be the first Matters Day to be celebrated after two years of the COVID-19 lockdown. Celebrated uh, each year. I hope this preparation will give us momentum to attract many people because they are expectant. The committee that is in charge is aware that we shall have to make sure we observe the SOPs. It is on the theme, Hope Beyond Affliction, with emphasis of hope after COVID and the story of the Uganda matters being one of hope. There will be a thanksgiving service at All Saints Cathedral Church, Nakasero, on 22nd April, in which to start a fundraising to support activities. The dioceses have raised 110 million, which has, is already on the count, and we are, after Easter, we've targeted to, to bring the remaining, which is about uh, 90 million, almost making 200 million. The chairman of the organizing committee, Ephraim Kamuntu, said 3rd June is Faith Best Tourism Attraction Day. They put Uganda on the map. They eat our food. They stay in our hotels. They drive in our cars. Indeed, the contribution, Faith Best Tourism, contribution to national tourism and consequently contributing to foreign exchange of the country is huge. Other activities include publishing a historical coffee table book featuring the unique features of Ankole, like the role of Christianity and the East African Revival Movement. The preacher of the day is expected to be Emeritus Bishop Samson Mwaluda, a renowned international evangelist and guest of honor, His Excellency Jeno Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. I'm Nafka Farida and Mary Namkose in Kampala. Another fisheries protection unit has destroyed fishing nets, hooks, among other illegal gear, which was recently implanted during the operations. The illegal fishing gear band was from areas of Bugonga landing site in Tebe municipality after the army unit acquired a court order allowing them to ban the nets. Have worship now Messi Koya, the Tebe grade one magistrate presided over uh, the banning of the illegal fishing gear. The Fisheries Protection Unit, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Dick Keija, requested court to order the burning of illegal fishing gears, which were impounded from different parts of the country. I granted an order that such nets be destroyed by burning, and that is why we are here to give accountability. I ordered for destruction of over 9,000 nets, then the gill nets, 1,000, and then the undersized hooks, 1,700. The culprits fled during the UPDF operations, leaving the items behind. However, Lieutenant Colonel Keija adds that Uganda Road Court penalized one person with 4 million Uganda shillings. Operations were conducted on both land and water, and in most cases, when the illegal traders see the enforcement team approaching, they tend to abandon and run away. Undersized nets, twina, undersized hooks, twin fishing lines, and the tribe you never cocota, you never cut, 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 you transporters, cut, you never cut, you never 
Meanwhile, the FPU commander suggests that more consignments belonging to Mubarak, Buyinza and others are still in custody pending a court order to dispose them off. The stores are still full for three cases which are still before the court. There is one for Sekito in Jinja, there is another two gentlemen for the Mubarak Buyinza and others which are still going on court and we cannot destroy or dispose of those exhibits because they are still required in court. Sarah Dungu Ibari, the chairperson for Gonga Sale, loaded the gesture, eliminating illegal fishing. The chairperson Today in history. On 12 April 1991, the African National Congress, ANC, made public its proposed constitutional principles. Among the things that the discussion document called for was a non racial democratic state with a Bill of Rights, the independence of judiciary, and other related issues. This was followed by the first plenary session of the Convention for a Democratic South Africa which began on 21st December 1991 at the World Trade Center, Johannesburg. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. Available at MTN service centers and M Copper shops. COVID-19 is still here with us. As Professor Magichigozi states, the time is now for all of us to get vaccinated. When we have one person who's not vaccinated, it affects everybody around them, most especially the ones close to you. Keep your families safe. Anyone right now who's over 18 should go and get vaccinated. Because of the new COVID-19 circulating variants like Omicron, it is very important for all of us to be fully vaccinated with two doses of the same vaccine type. It's only those getting Johnson & Johnson who receive only a single dose to be fully protected. Even after vaccination, continue to adhere to all SOPs by wearing a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose, washing your hands regularly with soap and clean water, or using an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining physical distance of at least two meters from others, and avoiding crowds. Echa COVID-19, chijakugwa. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and partners. This is how we play. Play with power. This is how we do it. How we put a team together. This is how we pass on greatness. Because with this team to inspire us, there's nothing we can't do. Go for goals and win. Buy a Pepsi glass bottle or Pepsi Max 330ml. Check another crown and win soda, TVs, caps, t-shirts and cash. Redeem prizes at any Pepsi depot or truck countrywide. Terms and conditions apply. Pepsi. For the love of it. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans. Get a top-up loan when you have insufficient funds to buy airtime, pay utility bills, or make payments at a local supermarket. Complete your transaction and pay later. Dial star 185 star 7 star 10 hash to opt in. Get an Airtel Money Quick Loan and pay later. Choose our with Airtel Money Quick Loans in partnership with Housing Finance Bank and powered by Yabex. Airtel, the smartphone network. Welcome back. You are still watching News Tonight. Government has unveiled interventions to contain the spread of the African Army Worm, which has affected 38 districts in the country. Said Minister for Agriculture, Fred Buino, says that 600 million shillings has been spent in purchasing sprays and pesticides. African army worm has affected more than 38 districts across Uganda, destroying cereal crops and pasture. Through awareness, government advises the public on quick responses to the ravaging worm. We encourage the population to manually remove 
the eggs from crops, from the leaves of cereals or pastures. Look for the right pesticide if you can access cypermethrin 5EC. And when you get the right pesticide, mix 100 mils, 100 to, to, 100 to 120 mils of this pesticide in 20 liters of water. And then you spray. Dig a ditch around <coughs> the affected area. Because when you dig a ditch around the affected area, the worms will move, trying to spread to other gardens, and they will fall into the ditch. And they will not be able to go beyond there. Government has procured items needed to respond to the reported emergencies in the affected areas. Three. We have procured 23,000 liters of this chemical. And this is quite a big amount. We have also procured supra uh, equipment. And we have deployed all these in the affected districts. David Tomkama, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, blames the army worm invasion on the effects of climate change, which results in too high temperatures that favor breeding. The consequence of climate change. It's very, very important for us to remember climate change, uh, uh, meaning that we are in the process of destroying the environment. Because of this, we have raised temperatures and then made it easy for pests such as the African armyworm to be prevalent. Miriam Womcha, UBC News. Meanwhile, parents in Malaba Town Council have commended government for the decision made to invest over 2 billion shillings in the construction of Malaba Seed Senior Secondary uh, School. The parents say the absence of a government secondary school in the area had greatly affected the social economic development in the area with many students dropping out immediately after primary level and joining a legal business of smuggling across the Uganda-Kenyan border. Malaba Seed Secondary School is among the 259 secondary schools in the country that have been constructed by government under the Intergovernment Physical Transfer Program through World Bank support within a period of five years from 2016 to extend education services to the population. This after the border town was identified as underprivileged with a plentiful population of secondary school going age without any nearby government aided school. We didn't have any government school, uh, secondary school around. The only government school we had here was about 9 to 10 kilometers, that is in Kwapa Singe, and either Manjas in Tororo. So, therefore, you find that the children had difficulty of actually accessing to proper education by tracking all those journeys. The situation, according to the leaders, was leading to rapid dropout of learners immediately as their primary education. The situation led children to get dropped out of school, joining these dubious businesses like this cross-border issues and uh, playing maybe this uh, carrots and whatever and so many things. And even uh, at times the early pregnancy came from there. So that was a very big challenge because of the lack of the school, secondary school around. On behalf of the Honorable First Lady. While commissioning the facility, State Minister of Defense in charge of veteran affairs, Jacob Oboth of both, appealed to the population to make the best use of the school, transform the community. If we are going to develop, we have to embrace education. That is a secret, that is a secret I know that changes homes. That removes acacia trees in the compound and you have pine planted. That removes these other funny, funny trees of the rich people, educated people. You don't find funny, funny trees. You find pine just whistling, palms, 
Not acacia. Not bongi. I don't know what bongi is in English. Abongot. Not abongot. With the school population already at over 700 learners, the leaders are optimistic that this will improve on literacy level around the border community. Education is going to change the face of Malaba. We are going to see to it that most people who are educated. First and foremost, Malaba used to have people who end in all level. Some just dropped out and joined business because they were lacking a facility like this one. But the only thing is still to appeal to the government. We have very few teachers in the science subjects. Because we, we sent to the ministry 25 teachers, they only recruited 15. The fully-fledged seed school that cost the government over 2 billion shillings has got three classroom blocks, a multi-purpose hall, two unit size blocks, teacher's quarters, library and ICT block, administration block, among others. And police in Arua City are holding a mother for allegedly strangling her two-month-old baby girl to death. According to police report, Sharon Amanio, the accused mother is said to be a known drunkard in Kosel Yivu Ward in a Yivu West Division who is often seen torturing the baby after getting drunk. Police spokesperson for West Nile, Josephine Angutia, said Amanio was, has been rather charged uh, with murder. Ambassador cautioned mothers against alcoholism because consumption of alcohol can alter mental reasoning. Headquarters from one Tabu Albino that one Aitasi Abel, aged two months, had been murdered at Core Cell. So police visited the scene of crime, uh, recorded uh, statements from witnesses. However, it was equally established that the suspect uh, happens to be the mother of the deceased and uh, she has been a, a known drunkard in the village. And uh, whenever she's drunk, she tortures the baby badly. So police observed that uh, this baby must have been strangled by the mother because of the evidence of discharge of feces. Uh, the mother was later on arrested, detained at Onduparaka police station, when you're drunk, your mental uh, status changes and you may not be able to manage babies or infants well in that condition. So it is always recommendable for mothers to avoid or minimize consumption of alcohol so that they are able to bring up these children well, they are able to protect them, secure them, and also, uh, they are able to take charge of the homes. And 12 years after the infamous Bududa landslides, residents have started planting trees to shield the area from a replica of the disaster. Uh, so far, the landslide scur of 2010 is now farmland and residential area for the people of Nametsi. This comes as government is yet to implement on the plans to reforest, reforest the area. 12 years, Nametsi land witnessed landslides that claimed at least 100 lives. Remnants were relocated to Chiriandongo district. Government then mooted a plan to turn this piece of land into a forest, hoping the trees would act as windbreakers in the mountainous district of Bududa. Residents have started enforcing tree planting. Bududa district chairman Milton Kamoti says government should extend social services for the remaining families and other people living in this area. The government secured some land in Kiriandongo and they located some people. But as we talk, the condition is in Kiriandongo was so hostile that these people could not stay there. So they decided to come back. You have been in a mess today. You saw what was there. The population is so big. They need health services. They need education. What do we do? 
the once victims of the landslides have reproduced and multiplied, causing further encroachment on the steep slopes for agriculture. Neither are they ready to die. Because when they die, they will blame the government. So we're saying the government should step up its efforts in making sure that we resettle these people in lowlands and abandonize these areas so that we leave the other place for growing of trees and the food crops. This was during the launch of a tree planting project funded by the Association of Korea Alumni who are back and working in Uganda. <laughs> The representative of South Korea to Uganda and program director Gidam Kim related the geography of Nametsi to that of Korea. And this project is not only for uh, this, the community people, I think it's for their next generation. So I hope this project will help things the, for the, this generation and the further generation. Such efforts to replicate the approach to landslides are a must. Dokas Kimono, UBC News. And with that, to take a quick break when we return. Business news, this is News Tonight. Be alert. Do not share your Airtel Money PIN number with anyone. Airtel Uganda employees will never ask for your Airtel Money PIN number on call, SMS, or by email. All SIM card registrations, SIM card verifications, or SIM swaps are done at clearly branded Airtel shops and not on phone. To report any fraudulent activity, please call 100 immediately. The official calling number for Airtel promotions is 0200. 100 100 stay alert on airtel money instant secure borderless we bring you a fresh well-researched program to help you identify opportunities for investment job creation growing your entrepreneurial skills wealth creation and social transformation create wealth transform livelihoods Every week, we showcase opportunities for creating new products and services. Excellence in innovation, the passion and drive to succeed, and the right mindset to grow your business. Create wealth, transform livelihoods. Brought to you by Operation Wealth Creation. Need to send money to a loved one but you don't have enough on your phone? Have you run out of fuel but you don't have enough money? Do you want to pay for yaka or water but have insufficient funds? Or do you want to shop but you don't have enough money? Don't worry. Get away with MTN Momo Advance. Momo Advance tops up your Momo to complete your transactions. Dial star, one six five star, five star, three hash to apply. MTN Momo Advance is always available when you need it. Welcome back. You are still watching news tonight. Uh, now in biz business news, Motorcare Uganda has unveiled the Nissan, I beg your pardon, uh, I beg your pardon, Motorcare Uganda has unveiled the, ne the Nissan Next program that focuses on transitioning to fuel efficient vehicles and eventually going completely green. The shift to fuel efficient and electric cars by most motor vehicles, rather, motor vehicle manufacturers is influenced by the need to urgently tackle climate change resulting from harmful carbon emissions. The mission of Nissan, one of the leading motor vehicle manufacturers globally, is to move from providing normal and natural means of transport to going green and more efficient. When you say the new technology is expensive, when they develop new technology, they are trying to save you from something. So there is a saving in one way or the other. Now, if it is electric vehicles, when you are buying an electric vehicle, it may seem expensive when you are buying it but you're going to save a lot on maintenance. 
This was disclosed at the unveiling of Nissan Terra in Kampala. With diverse intelligence parameters, the new entrant on Uganda's roads operates under the available variables, which makes life easy for drivers. It has the rear traffic alert. That means it alerts you for the traffic behind you and any object that's approaching you from behind. It also deals with blind spots. It has the intelligence to know what exactly is happening around the vehicle at any one given time, and all that comes in. Now, the interesting part of it is that if you keep on insisting and um, maintaining certain speeds, the vehicle will actually bring a very big warning on the screen with a cup of coffee. And it will ask you a question, is it time for coffee break? The global motor vehicle industry is blamed for accelerating environmental destruction through carbon emissions. To try and offset the carbon footprint, most manufacturers are going green. Because we basically sell vehicles and they use fossil fuel. Now we are moving into the next program where we are going to be looking at electric vehicles. <coughs> we already have the Nissan Leaf in our showroom and we also have the electric scooters. And we're thrilled to not only have the opportunity to work with them, but to be also one of the first to actually test drive their new vehicles. The Nissan Terra, a mid-size SUV manufactured by Nissan and launched in Uganda, is part of the Nissan Next program, which not only focuses on cars, but scooters too. Dennis Sigar for UBC Business. Now, Sports Postema University has expressed readiness to host the 2022 Federation of East African Universities Sports Women Games. The activities start on Friday with a gender roundtable for women to discuss several issues. The games are going to kick off on 15th April. We are hosting two events, the gender roundtable and the women games the federation of east africa university sports women games we are ready to receive the host as you can see our fields are ready we've, we've done all the clearing we are having we are going to have most of the events here at the university the general table will run on 15th which will bring together women for in, in women and men to discuss the gender equality the theme of the event is forging an equal playing ground for women in university sports so the Eastern African universities are coming here to discuss how they forge, they forge a way forward for women in university sports. We want gender equality in university sports. The general roundtable is going to talk about science, engineering, technology, and math, and sports. That is how we have blended it. The games competitions are going, also going to run for the three days from 15th to 17th. And the theme is the same. And we have about 13 events, football, netball, athletics, rugby. We have confirmations from about 13 universities from Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And we are ready to host the guests on that day. Well, and that does it for news tonight. Thank you for sticking with us. I am Rod Ngonzi. Have yourselves a lovely night.